and with the church, with the peace of the Lord Jesus. Our brethren who are with us also, I'd like to wish everyone the peace of the Lord Jesus. I now invite the church to stand up. We're going to read still in Matthew 13. Thirteen, Matthew thirteen. The topic says already being well explained. Matthew thirteen, verse verse one to three. On the same day. Jesus went out of his house and sat by the sea. And great multitudes were gathered together to him, so that he got into a boat and sat, and the whole multitude stood on the, sh on the shore. Then he spoke many things to them in parables, saying, Behold, a sore went out to sow. Amen. Lord, we we'll pray to you at this moment. We pray for so that each one here, whether here or online, that you may sow your seed in their hearts. Lord, bless greatly your word. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Church may be seated. In this passage, that it speaks right out of the start that Jesus came out of his house and went to the sea, near the sea. And there the people gathered around him. And then he, he set himself apart from the people went and got into a boat and began to teach to the people. And today, we came here to, to see what that means to us. We see that the Lord Jesus, He came out of eternity. He came to the world to bring a message to the world. And uh, here in John 1, 14, it says the following, that Jesus and put this blessing, you know, those glasses here, you know how it is, I can't see anything. So the word became flesh and inhabited amongst us and we see the glory like the glory of the only son of the father filled with grace and truth and here is the lord jesus came down coming down from glory and bring coming to our to, to our days to bring something to man and that was his project all the way from eternity he came became flesh and uh, he had only one purpose to enter into a boat and into a uh, work of the Holy Spirit in order to bring to us salvation knowledge of an eternal life Lord Jesus he separated from the multitude because Jesus is holy the Lord Jesus, he enters into that boat and begins then to establish this kingdom. Because this kingdom that we are giving continuity to, and now he speaks through a parable, the parable of the sower. And the first passage that he begins to teach us through, he speaks about a path, a way where the seed was 
left and the seed was on one a unable to sprout or become a tree and produce fruit because the path the way on which the people walked by was a hard ground my brand the way today we have roads to go everywhere but the way is is a ground that has been stomped on here beside the church the bread they made a, a path there so that they can go through the parking lot on the side so every day they walk through that path so nothing will be sprouting from there and when I was a child I was living in a city and I wanted to go to the river there was no road that would lead to the shore of the river everybody would go through those through this path path and from afar you can you could see from the pasture you could see the path because people walked through there and nothing would uh, there would be no life on this patch of land and many times as I, w I walked through this path sometimes I would see uh, a, a bird that was eating from the seeds that would fall and uh, we would get surprised by the bird and the bird would also surprise us the bird would us uh, believers of us if you have lived in a place that is far away you know what I'm talking about so a path that people walked on is stomped ground on this ground there's no room for the seed to sprout and now I tell the brethren if your heart is being stomped on always hurt always receive a word that is evil the word of, of the Lord will never grow and sprout in your heart if you are a person has suffered where where there is only anguish only sadness only sadness going towards your life nothing will be there will be no life there it will be something that that will be dry terrible and the one the only one who is going to harvest there is going to be the devil so when the things of the Lord are stomped on in our heart there is no room for the things of the Lord but I tell the brethren tonight the Lord Jesus came to change this the Lord Jesus came to to put water on this ground soften this this ground remove the hardness of man's heart it bring eternal life the Lord Jesus wants to give eternal life that crowd that gathered near the Lord Jesus they they came from every walk of life a few knew the Word of God others didn't a few wanted the kingdom of God others didn't want man it is not different today sometimes you know the Lord you're persistent in in letting go of the path of the Lord the things that you have already learned and learned and saw where are you going to are you going to death John 10 10 let's see what the Lord says through his word
terão a roubar e matar e destruir. The thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they may have life and that they may have have it more abundantly. The intention of the enemy is this, is to kill, steal and destroy. Don't give up right now because the Lord is coming to give eternal life. The message is long. Rocks, if there are several passages, several parts of this parable, there, is, there are the thorns, there are the stones, that they, they may hurt you. But if you pick up the example of this today and accept the word of the Lord, allow Him to water your heart, you will see the glory of God. The seed has been thrown. Uh, and the fourth place is on the, pe on the way uh, amongst the stones where there were thorns and the good ground. And my brethren, when we sow, there is a harvest. When we sow, is because we are going to, we intend to have a harvest. And the intent of the Lord tonight is Are you, are your life be sown that will lead to life or to death? What is going to be sown tonight is going to lead to life or to death? What are you doing here tonight? What do you want? Do you have the, the right to choose between life and death? Because the Lord allows you to do so. Choose, therefore, life so that you may have life. Blessed be the name of the Lord.
the Lord was has shown tonight he came with us in the service a man and his heart he placed a purpose there and the purpose that he placed on his heart was that this was going to be his last service here in this church but the Lord uh, was showing that throughout the service from the pleading all the way to this exact moment there was an operation of the Holy Spirit on the life of this servant this brother and the Lord changed this understanding on his mind and he began to be reminded of all the acts of justice that the Lord has done on his life, on his behalf, and to his benefit. He felt all the love that God gave to him throughout his existence. The care, the love, the grace, the mercy that has always been upon his life. And he would give up on this thought and he would reconcile once, once again with the Lord. And Brother John spoke about the Word. There's a song of the children that says, Your Word is a seed and you are the sower. And my heart is what it is, is, is the ground. Your heart is the ground, the fertile ground that today the Lord once again has sown his seed. And what is interesting about the seed, you know what it is, my brethren? Is that in order for it, for it to sprout, it needs to die. It has to die. And Jesus died on the cross of Calvary to pay for our sins and to sprout, sprout salvation, to be, uh, to be placed in your heart. And the Lord also has shown another woman and this, this sister, she has a Bible and she also has a self-help book. And every time that she needs a, a, a guidance, an instruction, she doesn't seek the Bible, the Word of God, but she goes to, to those self-help books, the writers. In the self-help book, the Word says self-help is for you to help yourself and for you to make an effort to, in order to achieve an objective. But the help that comes from above is the one that God has for our life. My effort and if for you to use techniques of self-help is for this life. But the help for the Lord is for this life. It's also for the eternal life. Seek ye the Lord in the first place and everything in his righteousness and everything else will be added unto you is not by force or violence but it is through the spirit of the Lord may you tonight have the Lord as your helper as, uh, as a, uh, your assistant like Joseph said in the past where my help is coming from the, the help comes from the Lord the one who made heaven and earth and from this day forward you may Look to the Bible of the Lord as something that is alive, because the word of the Lord is alive and is efficient. In every time that that you need a help, a direction, an instruction, seek the Lord, because He is speaking with you tonight. Exactly because of this, because from this day forward, He wants to be the North in your life. He wants to be your guide. He is going to. He wants to instruct you to towards green pastures and crystal clear waters. He wants to give rest to your soul. Self-help, in self-help you find many things, but rest for your soul only the Lord has. The seven, the past, the Bible speaks about it in the, in the book of Psalms. My soul thirsts for God. And this God that has noticed that you are thirsty, He came tonight, He came to this place to give this word for our life. He wants to quench the thirst of your soul. The seed tonight is being 
placed on good ground, fertile ground. It will sprout. Why is that? Because the Holy Spirit will water it, will make it grow, and you produce fruits in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Let us stand up. We're going to have a word of glorification to, to our Lord. Lord, you have been merciful. You have been with us. You show the path that will lead us to eternity. I ask that you continue with us, taking care of our lives, helping us to walk, strengthened by your hands, Lord. You take care of our lives, Lord. Don't allow us to give up, Lord. Blessed be your holy name. In the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We praise the Father. We thank you. We want once again tonight raise praise your name because you have been a God. Holy is your name. My church, I walk uh, amongst you, and tonight you have I have a particular particular intimacy with each one of you. I'm giving the healing of many hearts. with wounds, wounds that many but I tell you tonight that I'm cauterizing those wounds so that you may glorify and praise your God beloved church I have prepared your lives for the meeting with me in my eternity. Glory to God. We praise the Lord. We're thankful for yet another day, or this opportunity of being with you in your house, Lord, in your presence, for your sweet presence of your Holy Spirit in our midst, to bring joy and bring comfort to our hearts. Please, Lord, so that throughout this week your hands may be laid upon our lives, protecting us, delivering us, and 
opening up our eyes, and it causes us to be sensitive to your voice, and every day we may understand your project towards us. Bless us, Lord, and receive the service of adoration that we offer you in the holy name of Jesus. In your name we say the wonderful grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, your good and eternal Father, and the sweet, sweet and tender consolation of the Holy Spirit with the entire people of God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The brethren can be seated. The service has come to its end. And you, my brother, who are with us, there we have a few brothers that can give you assistance if you need a, a prayer, an assistant, an explanation of what was said tonight. You can raise your hand through Zoom, and the brother will give you the proper assistance. And to ones who are present, we are still here, present, to give assistance. You pray for each one of you. I'd like to brand, remind the brethren that our service is now a Thursday at 8 p.m., prayer service, Saturday service, Sunday, 7.30 p.m. We're going to have a seminar for usher, deacons, and pastors, and the entire church, whoever wants to participate. It's going to be this on this coming Saturday, we have a transmission from Brazil through YouTube. Everyone can participate. Amen. On Monday, tomorrow, or the day following day, remember that we have also the meaning to answer the question regarding the Sunday school at 8 o'clock p.m. But tomorrow, Ronildo will keep the brethren informed through the group of assistants. If anybody needs assistance, just raise your hand. The brethren are here at your disposal. I have a sister there on the back. She's asking for assistance. Oi. Não, no Brasil. Foi bom, foi bom.